Hey guys! Today I wanted to show you my next project which will be to help you guys grow a little hydroponic system in your own apartment. I am going to show you guys how you can grow some herbs and vegetables in your own home relatively easily. So let's get started. I have to be honest, I haven't tried this yet. <laughs> But my dad is a gardener, my grandfather is a gardener. We don't have a ton of space either, so we live in a one bedroom apartment and there is not like necessarily a basement um, or a closet that I can use, but this is definitely something you guys can put in a basement or a closet if you have that space. And if you have a secondary room, you can go ahead and go crazy and turn it into a plant jungle. All you're going to need for the setup is a stand, the right kinds of lights, some netting pots, a big bucket, a little bit of coconut core, and then some seeds. <laughs> yeah, I think that might be it though, other than that. So uh, let's get started. This right here is our plant stand. It's a three foot by three foot. I wanted to get something bigger, but we don't have the most space. So this is what we've got. Okay, so the shelf is up. Now we need to check for the boxes. Two on each side. These are the LED lights. There's a two pack, but I'm thinking right now that these boxes or the containers, they might be setting a little high for where the lights are going to be, so there's not going to be much room for the plants to grow. So I think I need to get some shorter containers. These are the LED lights. I don't know if you can see but they are just going to go right here. So what I had to do was the last containers that I bought off Amazon actually were too tall. <laughs> Basically, they were coming up to about here and the light that I just installed is, it was like less than maybe five inches from the light. So I traded it in for a box that I got from the container store, actually two different size boxes, and this is fitting so perfectly. I'm really happy with it. This is the boot box that I think was $15 from the container store, and um, this is the large shoe box. I think also called the men's shoe box from the container store. They're just about the same height. It's like almost six inches, and this is where we're going to put our hydroponic solution and what we need to do now is we need to cut the top so that we have uh, holes to put our netting pots in. So these are our three inch netting pots. I think it comes with a pack of 25 or 24 and we need to make a three inch hole so that there could be two netting pots that would go here. What I had to buy is a drill bit that is a three inch drill bit so it's ever so slightly smaller than the lip here so that's perfect that means that when we make this hole it's actually going to sit inside so now we just have to make the hole <laughs> so what I did is I put a little bit of dish soap here and I am putting it around the rim of this blade and that is making the process go a whole lot smoother and a whole lot quicker with a lot less of this edging. But now we can just fit our netting pots right inside. So that's a three inch circular blade with three inch netting pots. My dad actually supplied me with the hydroponic solution because he's a farmer. So this is called the Master Blend International 41838 Tomato and Vegetable Formula. And I have my seeds packet right here, which my husband, to be fair, this was his idea. So he wants to be the one to actually plant the seeds. Okay, so right now we just need to fill these bins up with the solution. And the solution needs to have a pH of about 5.5 to 6.5. It's the next day and we found out that coconut core is just not going to work for us. Um, it's got such fine particles that once the water touches the netting, it's basically just falling through. My dad 
got me a whole bunch of these clay pebbles and they're used for like hydroponic stuff. So we're gonna use them. And we also have something called uh, rapid rooter. Basically you stick the seed inside of that. This way it's totally safe and um, not gonna fall into the water. So we're gonna, we're gonna repot these little netting pots. So I put some uh, clay pebbles inside of the netting pot and then I'm gonna put the rapid rooter in to make sure that it's just about level and then continue to top it off on the sides and this should hold it in place so by the end I'm pretty sure it should just look like this. about 20 days since we last set this up and look at this growth I am so impressed like for part of the time um, we were actually away on vacation and I came back and we saw this we had a little mini cilantro plant over here and he's not the happiest under the direct light whereas this guy who was over here was not the happiest without getting the direct light so I've just uh, moved them but you know, they're becoming a little leggy in the spots that they're not getting the best amount of light. So that's where the light ends about here. That's where the corners, like the plants that are on the edges, they're not getting nearly as much light as the plants that are directly underneath. And the ones that are directly underneath are actually performing phenomenally, like really stellar. Um, just to show you what we got going on in the root growth area. So this is one of the ones that's a little bit in the leggy section and that's all the roots. Now what we're seeing here is we have a lot of algae growth and that's partially my fault and my not realizing that I should probably take the tops off of this and stain it um, like a black just so that the light is not getting through to the water as easily and it's not producing like algae. So that's something we're gonna do for the next time around versus something that's doing really good, has even better root growth. It's still covered with algae, so I'm not sure how that's gonna affect it in the future, but I mean, so far, it's just so beautiful right now. I'm going to put it back, and you can see that every single one of these has like really, really nice root growth, and this, <laughs> Basil plant is obviously too big for this section. I'm gonna need to find another place to put the basil because um, it will just keep growing up. And obviously this is not gonna be the best place for basil, but it is growing happy. So that's good to know that if you have more space, like you could totally, or if you wanted to remove a shelf, you could totally grow basil here. Um, just make sure that your lights are strong enough and you know to reach the bottom and basil will be happy to grow here. So yeah, this is only 20 days of progress and, um, and we've already gotten this much in terms of lettuce and plants. So the pros and cons of this setup is that it's really no hassle. Like once you have it going and started, um, you don't have to touch it for, well basically until you're ready to pick it. <laughs> like in the 20 days that we've had this going we've lost about a centimeter worth of water and even still i'm not going to replace this fertilized water until it gets to about an inch because you can see that the root growth has already gotten so far down that it really doesn't need to have the water replenished until it's um pretty much low and that doesn't look like that's going to happen for another month or so you really want to make sure that your plants are directly underneath the light because any plant that's not directly underneath the light, it's just gonna grow leggy and it's not gonna be a happy lettuce plant. So far, I don't see any signs of like damage of the leaves from burning or anything saying that the uh, lights get too hot for the plants. I think they're actually really low um, thermal lights. Like they don't put out a lot of heat, which is really good. So to summarize, what you need to do to get this set up going is you need a plant stand, which really is just a shelf unit. Um, something sturdy and stable, something metal will do the trick. You need your boxes or your containers that you're going to be putting the solution and everything inside of. I got these two containers from the container store and then we used a three inch circular drill bit to drill the holes at the top of the container so that we can stick our three inch netting pots inside. 
With the three inch netting pots, we filled it up with the clay pebbles and our rapid rooter, which is just the little soil starter to put our seeds inside so they don't get lost in the water. Once the seeds, um, a couple of seeds, just two to three to four seeds get put inside of the rapid rooter hole, you stick everything in this container and you fill up the container so that the bottom of the rapid rooter is touching the liquid and the liquid has to be whatever your fertilizer is, whatever you buy for fertilizer, um, that's what you're filling this up with. And you get lights that are plant LED lights, um, something that's going to be very fuel efficient and not cost too much to have on. You're going to want the plant lights to be on about 12 hours a day and set them on an automatic timer, which I'll put all of these links in the description so you can buy them for yourself. And with the automatic light timer, you don't have to do anything. You literally just set it and forget it and go about your day and make sure your cats don't eat your plants, <laughs> like mine sometimes do. And that's pretty much it. And then you just wait. They're not even ready to pick. Like I think they can still get larger, so I'm not gonna pick them yet. Here it is, day 30, and we have all of this growth, and it looks like it's pretty much ready to pick, and um, they're almost touching the lights now, so I'd say they're about ready to start eating. Really happy. I'm just so surprised that on the first try it worked out, and uh, this is me growing plants in a garden in my own very apartment. So if I can do it, you can do it too. I hope that this video helps give you guys the tools to reproduce this in your own home and shows you that you can certainly also grow lettuce and veggies in the wintertime, even in a cold state. Like and subscribe, comment below, and let me know what you guys end up doing. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please let me know. I hope that this helps you to grow some plants in your home.